The story itself has everything from seductions to carriage accidents to mysterious deaths, and it's just a really exciting novel. Welcome to The Secrets of Washington's Archives, a video series celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Washington Presidential Library by bringing you in to the Mars Rare Book and Manuscript Room here at Mount Vernon. I'm Dr. Ann Fertig, Digital Projects Editor for the Center for Digital History at Mount Vernon. And with me today is Samantha Snyder, the Research Librarian here at the Washington Presidential Library. We're going to be chatting today about a very special book indeed. One of the few books we have from Martha's collection, a sensational gothic novel called Children of the Abbey, published by Regina Maria Roche. Can you tell me a little bit about the importance of Martha's books? This book, Children of the Abbey, was originally published in Britain by Regina Maria Roche in 1796. And it was so popular, we actually see the American edition just a year later in 1797 appear. Mm -hmm. And in this book, it's a gothic novel, which is a very popular genre in the late 18th century. It tells the story of the twins Amanda and Oscar Fitzalan, who are beset by multiple misfortunes because they are deprived of their rightful inheritance by a forged will. And throughout the novel, uh, they are separated. Amanda is beset by multiple attempts at seduction. After many adventures and travails, a ghost leads them to find the rightful will found in the abbey, and they return to their fortunes, Belgrave dies, and they both marry their true loves. It almost sounds like a soap opera, but also I know that we've discussed how the themes of this book are very much relevant to that period, and it would not necessarily have been just this fluffy, dramatic Piece. Yes. So, you know, when we look at gothic novels and sentimental novels of the era, they can seem a little strange to modern audiences, perhaps a little over the top. But themes in gothic novels like false imprisonment or women's reputations being ruined, women being kidnapped, women being forced into marriages, these are drawn off of real fears that women might have had in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. And the gothic itself was largely written by women and it was largely read by women, just like Martha Washington read it. Yes, and so we know Martha Washington read it, but there's also someone else who was reading it too. Yeah, so this is a great book because we have so few of Martha's books surviving. And this book in particular has a lot of documentary evidence around it. So first we know that uh, Martha writes to her niece, Fran Frances Dandridge Henley, saying, I saw Children of the Abbey advertised in the city, will you please send it to me? And this is great because we can find the advertisements for that in newspapers that we know Martha and George subscribe to. So I know we know that Martha was reading these and that she wanted it. She saw the advertisement, she wanted it. And so she asked her niece to pick it up to her. Mm -hmm. And we also know that she read this book because her granddaughter, Eleanor Park Custis Lewis, or Nellie as we like to call her, she wrote in this book. Nellie inherited this book in 1799, right before her marriage. And she also wrote in this book, I, E.P. Lewis, value this old book because my beloved and revered grandmama read it and liked it. Which is such a testament. Martha didn't just read this book, she liked it. And it's also interesting because Women at this period, and particularly with novels in general, people tended to read them aloud in families or friendship groups. And Nellie was living at Mount Vernon at this time, particularly with Gothic novels, which were tended to be read aloud by women with other women. It's probably not unlikely or not implausible that Martha and Nellie would have read this book together. And I think it's also really interesting to point out that Nellie signs this book but Martha does not, even though we have this great trail talking about Martha in this book, which just goes to show that Martha did not sign all of her books. If this whetted your taste for a little bit of gothic fiction, or you wanna learn more about the other novels that Martha and Nellie read, be sure to check out the podcast companion to this video series, The Secrets of Washington's Archives, available wherever you download your favorite podcasts.